The Back for Blood Early Access starts today, and as a huge zombie game fan, we need to talk about it. So if you do enjoy these videos, make sure to drop a like and subscribe down below. And do let me know in the comments, what is your favourite zombie game? I'm Paradise Central, so let's get into it with what is Back for Blood and who made it. If you don't know, Turtle Rock Studios are the developers behind games that you may have heard of, such as Counter-Strike Source, Evolve, and most importantly here, Left 4 Dead as well. And this is really important because Back 4 Blood is much like a spiritual successor of the Left 4 Dead games. It pretty much oozes the feeling, the vibe of playing, and the gameplay of playing Left 4 Dead. And it's perfect for someone who loves those kind of zombie games. So basically, Turtle Rock Studios, known for Left 4 Dead, are here with Back 4 Blood. And that should sort of gear you up with what to expect. But there are some pretty important differences that we'll talk about as we continue on in this video. So let's start off by talking about the game modes. Because there is a campaign mode which consists of four different acts, three difficulties, and solo or up to four player co-op throughout all of it. Each act has multiple stages throughout it, and progressing through the act would unlock a checkpoint at different intervals. And that's important because when you reach a checkpoint, it means you can return there if you run out of continues on your current run of the campaign. However, you do get to keep supply points that you earned from the missions you completed along the way, and these basically go towards upgrading your base area, which sort of acts as the lobby, and these base upgrades also unlock you more cards and other things that help you through your next playthrough. And we'll talk more about those cards soon because they are a very important mechanic. There's also the Swarm game mode, which is a 4v4 PvP game mode where you go against another squad of players and you take it in turns either being the cleaners, who are the humans, or the ridden, who are the zombies. The goal in the swarm game mode is basically to take it in turns swapping teams between the humans and the zombies to see who can survive longest in order to win. The ridden team actually earn currency throughout the game to upgrade their zombie variations and boost their attack or their defense or to even just upgrade the regular horde of zombies such as making more of them, different variants in the horde and stuff like that. Meanwhile, the cleaners, the humans, have a predefined deck that they've already created that they sort of have the cards for as they're playing and earning as they're playing. So, to be honest, it was a really fun game mode from what I played, and I can really see a huge amount of depth going into the tactics of both the cleaner side and the ridden side, with comboing different zombie variants together, as well as using different items and tactics as the humans to sort of watch each other's back and survive for as long as possible. So overall, I was quite impressed by the Swarm game mode, and I can't wait to see the crazy things that people come up with in order to survive as long as possible. I do wonder just how repeatable and replayable it is when you're talking about sinking like tens or hundreds of hours into the game, so I'll have to play it more to really find that out, but my first impressions of the Swarm game mode was that it was really, really fun and interesting. Meanwhile, the campaign was very satisfactory from a Left 4 Dead fan's perspective. We do, however, have to talk about the cards next because they are a really important sort of system within the game. Think of cards like perks. They give you stat upgrades such as improved healing, more stamina, more HP and stuff like that. But it can actually go one step further and there can be other ones that give you extra lives, more inventory space and things like that. So they are a big impactful part of the game. And these are really important to make your life easier as you play through. You essentially unlock these cards by using your supply points that you've earned by just playing the game to unlock the supply lines in the base that not only improves the base but also gives you these extra cards and different things that you can then fit into your deck. So essentially you want to set up your deck to your preference and your playstyle. If you are a primarily melee player, then you might want to pick cards that synergize with melee damage and increase stamina and healing on, you know, hitting with melee weapons. Meanwhile, if you're someone that likes to sit in the back with a the sniper, then you'll want to tailor your deck towards something that synergizes with that style of gameplay even more. So there is some depth in unlocking these cards, setting out the deck to your personal playstyle, and then of course picking a character that has the perks on it that sort of synergize with you as well. So the cards are a very interesting mechanic and I'm really interesting to sort of see what kind of perks that you get later on in the game as well and how sort of crazy that they can get. 
So next up, let's talk about the characters, the zombies, and the different weapons. So overall, there are eight different characters in total. They're called cleaners. They're very visually different and voiced differently, but they also have their own respective card perks that are tailored to different types of playstyles. And they also offer a team-wide perk, so definitely make sure to check them out, read the perks, to synergize together the perfect team for taking on all the zombies. Some of them are very strong, such as an extra life. Other ones are things like extra damage, so it really does come down to your playstyle. There's also, for the swarm mode, three different categories of Ridden, and each category has three different variants within it to choose from. So you basically have the Tool Boys, the Stingers, and the Reekers. So for example, you can be a Stinger Ridden that's called a Stalker, and this one will jump on the cleaner's head and sort of steer them away, sort of jockey style from Left 4 Dead. Meanwhile, you could also be a Hawker Stinger, so still a Stinger but a different variant, and instead of jumping on people, this one actually launches a harpoon attack that immobilizes cleaners if it hits them. So there's some very different variations within each category of Ridden that do sort of completely do something different. And it's really great when you're trying to combo things together. So one thing that I found really fun to do was to play the Stinger Ridden, that's the Stalker, like the Jockey. And I would jump on them and I would steer them towards my team's Tool Boy, who would then just be slamming down on them and dealing massive damage. So there's different combos and synergies that you can do. There's also a variety of different weapons. There are seven sidearms, four melee weapons, five assault rifles, two machine guns, four submachine guns, four shotguns, and three snipers. And while playing throughout the game, you actually encounter different rarities of these weapons, and you can also put attachments on them, so you'll always find yourself upgrading them as you play through. And then there is also different customization options. So within the game, you can essentially customize your weapon skins, your cleaner skins, your profile banner, titles, and your spray paint. And these are unlocked through different methods such as achievements and progression in the supply lines by using your supply points. I had a good look around in the game and I did not find anywhere that I could purchase any of these customization options outside of the ultimate edition of the game that includes a couple of skins for the characters and the weapons. So it does look like you actually have to progress in the game and unlock these through the supply lines in order to get most of the weapon skins and stuff like that. So personally, I really enjoyed what I played of Back for Blood so far, but I am also a big zombie game fan and a lover of the original Left 4 Dead games, so take that as you will. I do need to play more of it and see how in-depth the story gets and how repeatable the swarm mode really is. At a basic level, first impressions, I did think that there was depth in there and that it was really, really fun from what I played myself. But still, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, that it brought you up to speed with what Back for Blood is and what you can expect from the game. Do make sure to drop a like and subscribe down below if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out. And let me know in the comments, did you play the original Left 4 Dead games? I am very interested. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a great day, staying safe out there. And that's it from me, so I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to catch more from us, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our latest uploads. And if you want somewhere to hang out, play games, or chat all things from games to anime, food to fitness, consider joining the RX Gaming Discord.